یک محدوده در چارچوب آنچه که به صورت پیشانی پیشانی و با شهود آوردن در اون چارچوب فقط به رسمیت میشناسن So this is sort of a limited version this this example of theology of what he said previously and in the sense that either uh, they, they totally rejected the rational or they li- limited the rationals to a certain sort of uh, a certain structure a certain limit and uh, and then went ahead with it or accepted it pas in yek ru kart has ke irade ro muqaddam bar و علم شهودی و اراده رو که به بخش گرم وجود انسانه کاملا تقدم میده به بخش سرد و بخش علم حصولی و برای او ارزشی قائل نمیشه در قیاس با این So this is then one type of approach where uh, they take the intuitive and that which is based on intention which is what he called the warm sort of side of uh, and they give it precedence over the conceptual and the cold در یه مسیر تاریخی ما می‌بینیم که کم و بیش در نسبت بین علم مفهومی و علم شهودی که به اراده باز می‌گرده به تدریج جامعه علمی بشر به سوی تقدم اراده بر علم پیش رفته so in, in, when we look at this historically and we see how the conceptual and the intellectual were related to one another uh, and we go forward we see that the the sort of the, the intuitive the conceptual and the intuitive we, we see that the intuitive which has to do with intention and the irada that that was given precedence as time went along we see the sort of the highest example of this in Nietzsche بعد از 100 سال حرف نیچه رو با یک گستردگی بیشتری در جامعه علمی در پست مدرن ها میبینید. And 100 years after Nietzsche uh, we see this in the postmodern philosophies. اونها قائل به این هستند که حتی نظام معرفتی ساینتیفیک و علمی روی یک پارادایم هایی می نشینه که این پارادایم ها رو اراده انسانی تعیین میکنه. Uh, they are of the belief that even the scientific sort of uh, the scientific world and scientific knowledge is based on a paradigm that this paradigm is uh, is based on the intention of man created by man hala mumkin qudrat bashe va ya zamine hay tarikhi bashe ke irade insan dar ro shek gerefte va awamil mukhtalifi asatir bashan chizayi ke liutar bayan mikone و یا فکو بیان میکنه و یا گادامر بحث سنت رو ذکر میکنه uh, these paradigms could be those that have to do with power or it could be with those other things that uh, for example myths and so on beliefs of people uh, that uh, were willed by man during, the, during this uh, period or going back to for example the opinions of Foucault and, and Gadamer and so on در طرف مقابل این روی کرد روی کرد دیگری است که برای علم حصولی ارزش قائل و علم شهودی رو براش جایگاه معتبری قائل نیستش in opposition to this type of these types of movements and these approaches you have the approach which gives importance and precedence to the conceptual and is a, and in fact uh, and uh, uh, gives less importance to the intellectual or is opposed to it to the, to the intuitive sorry intuitive man diruz ishara kardam ke falsafa hai tahlili dar tay qarn 20 um ye intor ru kardi ro bishtar daran the the uh, analytical uh, the analytical philosophies uh, they were of this type in the 20th century dar jahan islam هم شبیه این جریان کم و بیش نه کامل میتونید یه مقداری در معتزله ببینید in the islamic world uh, this type of thinking you can see amongst the mu'tazili نه کاملا اما شاید رگه های از این دیده بشه not totally but you see strains of this type of thinking در فلسفه اسلامی این روی کرد زیاد مشاهده نمیشه 
in the in Islamic philosophy you don't see this approach اما یه مقدار باز شبیه این رو و تمایل به این رو میتونید در ابن رشد ببینید but you can see something similar to it in the philosophy of ابن رشد Averroes و ابن رشدیان در جهان غرب این رویکرد رو داشتن یعنی کسانی که در قرون وسطا متاثر از ابن رشد بودن به این مسیر با این قرائت پیش رفتن the philosophers in the west who were affected by avros and ibn rush they also went this way they, they took up this اما فکر می کنم که مهمترین نمونه این مسئله در فلسفه در فلسفه مدرن غرب این بروز و ظهور پیدا میکنه از دکارت تا هگل But the most uh, important example of this way of thinking in the West is perhaps uh, in that period that starts from Descartes, uh, Descartes and goes to Hegel. در حقیقت این لایتنمنت و روشنگری مدل با این ویژگی شناخته میشه. And in fact, the enlightenment uh, and the modern period is known by this particularity, this way of thinking. شما در این لایتنمنت یک تقابل با شهود و شهودگرایی رو می‌بینید. In the enlightenment you see an opposition to the intuition and the intuitive. مرجعیت شهود برای علم مدرن به همین دلیل حذف میشه. Hence for modern knowledge uh, the intuitive is no longer a source that they can base their knowledge on. دکارت در همه چیز شک میکنه مگر آن چیزی که برای اندیشه او روشن باشه. دکارت doubts all things except for those things which are clear in his thinking. خودش را هم با اندیشه خودش میخواد اثبات بکنه. در کوجیتو. He in his cogito he wants to prove his own self by his thinking. و بیان هگل این است که آنچه که اندیشیدنی نیست نیست. And Hegel uh, famously says that that which cannot be thought does not exist. در اندیشه هگل هستی هویتی کاملا عقلانی داره اونم عقل برهانی با ضرورت های استدلالی که براش مطرح میشه. In Hegel's uh, thought uh, the world and the universe only has a rational existence and, and even that the rash that rationality which is based on demonstration and proofs hegel مثل کانت نیست که عقل رو حجاب جهان واقع بدونه و فقط یه معرفت اپریوری مال نفس بدونه بلکه متن واقع رو کاملا عقلانی میدونه hegel is not like kant who sees rationality to actually be a, a veil uh, that's preventing us from knowing the reality in the world او روی کارت‌های شهودی که در عرصه دین و مانند اینها وجود داره نوعی مراتبی از خود بیگانگی عالم از خودش و انسان از خودش می‌دونه هگل those those things that are based on intuition And, and visions and so on he sees these as being uh, examples of alienation where man is being alienated from reality و خداگاهی هستی رو وقتی میدونه که از زبان انسان و در وجود انسان یک تفسیر صرفا عقلانی از خود داشته باشه and he sees a man to be only self aware and properly aware when he has a rational exposition and explanation of reality. البته این انسان انسان اروپایی آلمانی و خود هگل هستش. But of course this type of man that he's referring to is that man which is western or german or, or even just Hegel himself. قرار نبود من تو این مقطع بحث تاریخی رو بکنم فقط می‌خواستم نسبت‌های بین اینها رو بیان بکنم. I didn't want to start a historical discussion I just wanted to show the relationship between these two the conceptual and the intuitive اینا هم که فعلا گفتم برای نمونه و شاهد بود که نشون بدم هر کدوم از این روی کرده ها چه ویژگی هایی دارن در این با این مثال ها خواستم بیان بکنم So with these examples and I just wanted to show how these different approaches between in terms of the relationship between these two how they actually occurred اما 
یه روی کرده سومی هم وجود داره که یکی از این دو رو به نفع دیگری مصادره نمیکنه یا تقلیل نمیده به دیگری there is a third approach which does not give uh, undue precedence to one of these either the conceptual over the other meaning the intuitive and but but actually tries to have them in balance هر سطحی از شهود رو متناسب با او یک سطحی از مفهوم رو براش قائل میشه it sees for every level of the intuitive an appropriate and corresponding level within the conceptual مفاهیم حسی با شهودهای حسی ارتباط دارند the the conceptual the uh, the the concepts that are sensorial and based on senses it, it sees them to have a, a basis in the intuitive the intuitive senses sensor, sensorial intuition مفاهیم خیالی به شهودهای خیالی مرتبط هستند so concepts that are imaginal are related to intuitions that are imaginal و مفاهیم عقلی در ذیل شهودهای عقلی قرار می گیرند. And, and the rational or intellectual concepts are also related to the, their intuitive counterparts. یک سطح دیگری از شهود مون خاطرتون هست که از این ستا تفاوت داشت. There's one other level of intuition that has remained if you remember which level that is. نسبت اون سطح از شهود با مفهوم چیست؟ So he's asking what is the the uh, correspondence or what is the relationship of that level of intuition to its conceptual counterpart. من دیروز اشعار حافظ رو خوندم در ازل پرت حسنت ز تجلی دم ز. I, I read the poem from ha- Hafiz yesterday. Remember about the intellect wanting to 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 grab که اون شهود وقتی میاد که عوالم عقلی و همه اینها فراتر بره و دیگه جا برای این عوالم باقی نمیمونه so that, that type of intuition occurs when the, this, this lower sort of these lower worlds are no longer there شهود اون وحدت متعالی که در عرض و در طول او دیگه چیزی نیست و همه امور بعد آیه و نشانه او باشن. So that type of intuition we're talking about that supreme transcendental unity where there's nothing else beside it, nothing comparable to it. و این کسرت دیگه مستقل دیده نمی شوند. And, uh, and I forgot something in the last part and everything becomes a sign of that reality of the single reality and there's no such thing as multiplicity anymore. نه کسرت حسی و خیالی و نه کسرت عقلی. So neither a multiplicity that is sensorial or imaginal nor even a multiplicity that is intellectual. And that, that ayah that he quoted that the, uh, the earth will shine with the light of his Lord. If you remember from yesterday we talked about that. خب این مدل شهود چه نوع مفهومی رو در حاشیه خودش میاره؟ So the question is that this type of uh, intuition what type of concepts can it have این جای سوال و پرسش خودش رو داره this, this, is a, this is a good question in itself این شهود ضد عقل نیست this type of intuition this, this, this one this super intellectual Uh, it's not anti-rational. It's not anti-intellectual. فراعقل است. It's supra-intellectual. کسی که به این سطح از شهود میرسه مفاهیمی رو در افق مفهوم عرضه میکنه. Somebody who reaches this level of intuition also has concepts to present. و مفاهیم رو به صورت کلمات و عبارات هم بیان میکنه. And also explains these, uh, this using Um, using words using these concepts using words اما این مفاهیم آنچنان نیست که فقط با خود شهود عقلی قابل تبیین با با مفاهیم عقلی و توی منطقه عقلی قابل تبیین باشه بله but these these concepts are not such that they can be explained just using conceptual language or conceptual words 
يعلمكم ما لم تكونوا تعلمون He's quoting an ayah where uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that he will teach you that which you could not have known نه با معرفت عقلی میتونید سیت فرا بگیرید نه با معرفت حسی و نه با معرفت خیالی In other words things which you could not have learned either with your sensorial knowledge nor your imaginal knowledge nor your intellectual knowledge چون که درباره خود پیامبر هم هست که علم کما لم تکن تعلم just as there's another ayah in the Quran that we will teach you that which you did not know تا وقتی که انسان خود باشه چه خود خیالی و چه خود عقلی این سطح از شهود و مفهومی که در ذهن اون شهوده به دست انسان نمیرسه to the degree that a person is still attached to himself and is with himself is centered on himself that higher level is not he can't get that higher level این مرتبه از شهود مفاهیم رو در ذیل خودش میاره و به صورت عبارات و کلماتی منتقل میشه که این مفاهیم و کلمات رو ما به عنوان نقل میشناسیم so that high level of intuition brings with it concepts and ideas and words that are below it and that we associate this now or we call these things we call them we call it tradition or naql and it's been it's transmitted yeki az manabe ma'rifat ma naql and this is this, this transmitted knowledge this traditional knowledge is one of the sources of our our tradition monta naql az che chizi khabar mide but what is this transmitted and this traditional knowledge telling us about or telling us of گاهی نقل از معرفت حسی خبر میده. Sometimes these transmissions are telling us about the knowledge that is sensorial. گاهی نقل از معرفت عقلی خبر میده. Sometimes it's telling us about knowledge that is imaginal. گاهی نقل از یک معرفت فراعقلی خبر میده. Intellectual and and sometimes uh, that's something that is super intellectual. It's telling us about things that are super intellectual. ارزش نقل در این سنو خبر دادن یکسان نیست. The importance of such a transmission and tradition in these three different levels is not equivalent, it's not the same. Different levels of importance. یه نفری به دیگری رسیده بود، میگفت به ما گفتن که اون دیگری بهش میگفت که به ما خبر دادن که شما از دنیا رفتید. Uh, one person met another person and the first person said to the other that uh, I, I, heard trans- I heard somebody relate to me that you had died. So according to them, the, this traditional knowledge, it says that somebody has died. But obviously your senses tell you that he's still alive and he's نقلی که از حس خبر میده هیچ موقع جای خود حس رو نمیتونه بگیره so that transmission or transmitted knowledge that is telling you uh, something about senses in the sensorial it cannot take the place of actual sensation and, sens- and sensorial من به شما خبر میدم که دیوار پشت سر شما زرده uh, I for example can give you the report that the wall that's behind you is yellow الان این چقدر برای شما ارزش داره Um, how important is this for you? شما برگردید نگاه کنید دیگه معلوم میشه ببین نقل چندان نقش مهمی نداره. You can turn around and look but this report that I gave you does not have that much value or importance. اما در مورد حوادث تاریخی ما چاره جز راهی جز نقل نداریم. But with regard to historical events we have no other option but to use this type of transmission. چون کسی که حس کرده و دیگه اون محسوس از بین رفته تنها راه ارتباط با ما در این شرایط عادی فقط نقل لذا ما به تاریخ علوم جز علوم نقلی است so hence uh, for somebody who something that happened in history and is now gone somebody actually was there to sense it and gave a report about it it no longer exists the actual event so hence uh, these types of historical things are pertain to our transmitted knowledge or to the traditional knowledge ما البته در مورد نقلی که از تاریخ میشنویم باید تعقل بکنیم و تنقیح بکنیم و از همین مسیر اطلاعاتی رو به دست بیاریم 
But of course, these historical transmissions that come to us, we, we still have to think about them, we still have to intellect about them. But now the question is, to what degree is the transmission uh, that is coming from the intellect, in other words, when, when the transmission is based on the intellect, from, to what degree is that have, does, that, does that have authority? ما دو راه برای فهم قضیه فیثاغورس داریم و قبولیم. As an example we have two ways of understanding the uh, Pythagorean theorem. یکی فیثاغورس یا آلمان هندسه این چنین میگویند. For example we could uh, relate and say that you know that the philosopher himself Pythagoras that he said this or this is what he said and we can relate it in that way. یکی استدلال خود قضیه است که برگردیم استدلال رو در معرض ماس ما هم تعقل بکنیم بفهمیم. Or we can actually use the, uh, the way where we can use demonstration to actually prove his theorem. مطالب عقلی خودشون در معرض همواره در معرض نگاه عقل هستن و وساطت نقل نقش زیاد مهمی نداره. So things that pertain to the intellect in this way to rationality they can always be uh, verified at any time and they don't have that much need for a transmission, a historical transmission or report. مگر اینکه نقل بخواد خود توضیح و مطلب عقلی رو بیان بکنه که این دیگه به ما انه نقل نیستش. تعلیم عقل. But it's possible that, that, the, that the, the historical account or the transmission is trying to basically explain the intellectual truth and reality in which case is this is not really an, uh, a transmission but it is actually an intellection on its own in its own right اما شهود فراعقلی برای کسی که شاهد اون حقیقت هستش نه از طریق حس برای کسی دست یافته نیست و نه از طریق یا باید خود اهل شهود باشه و یا تنها راه نقل but with regard to the super intellectual apprehension uh, that is not possible through the senses or through the intellect or any other way and unless he himself is, is of that and is capable of that he has to rely purely on narrations and transmissions so in this type of a uh, this type of a transmission or a narration that is based on the super intellectual. He's quoting the ayah where he says this is the reminder for those uh, those who have a heart and themselves are witnessing directly those higher realities. And, or, or they have an ear to hear and they, they witness. به این معنا که اگر خود اهل قلب نیستند آنچه را که صاحب قلب گفته گوش می کنند این دیس میننگ دت اف دی دمسلوز آر نات پیپل هو هاف ا هارت تو تو پارتیسیپیت این دیس دایرکتلی دن دی کن ات لیست لیسن تو ایت سوال خوبی رو اول جلسه خانم زبید مطرح کردن دیر واز ا گود کوشن ات دی ویری بیگینینگ اف دی سیشن دت زبید اسکت در مورد اینکه روش علم شهودی و روش علم حصولی و تفاوت این دوتا With regard to the methodology of the conceptual knowledge and intuitive knowledge من گفتم که روش علم شهودی تغییر وجود انسان چون میخواد معلوم رو بیابه تحول در وجوده و عمله و رفتاره و زندگی است And I said there that the methodology in the intuitive knowledge is the change, the change of the being within man and it pertains to his actions, to his, to his uh, behavior and so on. اگر انسان میخواد صاحب قلب بشه و شهود بکنه اون حقایق رو باید عمل بکنه به آنچه که صاحب قلب بیان میکنه. So if somebody wants to reach that stage where to have a heart to perceive those higher super rational realities directly, then they must act and they must act upon the narrations of those people who do have a heart and who have told us what to do. Ilghay sam kardan yani in ke dar aye bayan mikone. O alqasam. 
or, or this idea of, that was re referred to in the ayah of, of sort of having ear, or giving the ear, this is what it refers to. وقتی که انسان الغای سم میکنه خود شاهد میشه حالا صاحب بسر میشه و میبینه. So if a person hears and, and, and listens now, so I guess from hearing we're talking about listening uh, to the people who do have a heart, then he himself or herself becomes a person with a heart to be able to witness those higher realities themselves. حالا برای این سطح از معرفت شهودی میشه گفت ایمان بیاور تا ببینی. So for this level of the intuitive, we can say that that expression of have faith so that you may understand to be true. اما این سطح از معرفت معرفتی ضد عقلی نیست، فرا عقلی است. But it's important that this level is not anti-rational, it's super-rational. اگر صاحب اون شهود یک سخنی بگوید که ضد عقل باشه معلوم است که آنچان شهودی رو نداره و دروغ داره میگه if somebody who has those types of you know, that higher super rational super intellectual intuition uh, and basically says something that is irrational then we know that that uh, that, that, that intuition is not correct مثل اینکه از خداوندگاران متعدد خبر بدهد For example, if they talk about or if they say and bring a report saying that there are, there are more than one God, there's, there's multiple gods, a pantheism. Or other things that the, the intellect cannot accept. خب سه روی کرد رو ما در اینجا ذکر کردیم. یه روی کردی که جهت شهود رو و ایمان رو و بخش گرم رو اصل قرار می گرفت و شناخت مفهومی رو کلا بی اعتبار می دانست و مانه می دانست یکی این که شناخت مفهومی رو اصل قرار می گرفت و آن سو شناخت شهودی رو براش ارزشی قائل نبود و یه روی کردی که این دو رو به یک صورتی به جمع می کرد که بیانی از این رو ذکر کرد so we've explained then three approaches and methodologies one that doesn't uh, that gives more precedence to the intuitive and less to the conceptual and we call this the warm approach one that gives precedence to the conceptual but uh, depreciates the intuitive and we call this the cold and there's a third approach which tries to balance the conceptual and the intuitive من در جلسه گذشته گفتم بحث ما دو ساعت خواهد داشت In the, session, in the session yesterday, I said that our discussion will have two different levels. One is the sort of the conceptual and the logical um, understanding of these three approaches, and one is the historical exposition of them. من فکر میکنم تا اینجا اون بخش اول بحث ما تمام شد. And I think that up till here we finished that first section the overall idea. بعد از فرصت کوتاهی که داشته باشیم سعی میکنم به قدری که وقت اجازه میده نگاه تاریخی به این مسئله رو در دنبال بکنم. After a short break Uh, we will go to the historical exposition of these different perspectives. اگر خاطرتون باشه عرض کردم هر کدوم از این روی کردها وقتی که غالب میشه با یک فضای فرهنگی تاریخی خاصی سازگاری داره. If you remember we had mentioned that any one of these approaches when it takes when it becomes ascendant it brings about or it corresponds to a particular culture a particular civilization. In your, th thank you very much for your <clears throat> explanations on this topic. I have a question that came up both in what you've just uh, spoken about, as well as many of the readings, uh, many of the texts, uh, Irfani texts, and this concept of imaginal. Um, it's really just a comment, maybe you can better clarify it. Uh, mm -hmm. The word in the West, in Western languages, is uh, is, um, is ambig not necessarily ambiguous, it's confused and conflated with imaginary. Um, and it is not the same thing as far as I understand it, but perhaps you can just give a brief explanation on how 
uh, imaginal, as, as I understand it, is it, it's, true, it's more of a reflection of images from the higher world, I suppose. Uh, but it, while related to imaginary, it's, 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 it's distinct and different. Just maybe a clarification on how one can explain the difference when speaking about it, just in general. In the, دو تا بحث اینجا داریم یک بحث مثال منفصل است و یک بحث مثال متصل من برای که مثال منفصل و مثال متصل رو بیان بکنم تفاوتش رو بین عالم حس خارجی و آنچه که انسان حس میکنه یه تفاوتی هست گاهی وقتا محسوس در خارجی یکیه چشم رو اینطوری میکنیم دوتا میبین اینجا فاصله میفته بین حس من و اون محسوس خارج خیال هم دو تاست یه خیالی است که در خارج از وجود ماست یه خیالی است که مرتبه از وجود ماست این رو میگن خیال متصل اون عالم خیالی که بیرون از ملکوت عالم بیرون از وجود ماست به اون میگن خیال منفصل ابتدا این توضیح بدید تو بعد ادامه بدم things here, two discussions on in the mythal, which is once again, for want of a better word, the imaginal world, uh, you have two types. You have one that's munfasil and muttasil. The munfasil is the one that's separated, that's without, so to speak, and the muttasil, the one that is attached or that is within. And he says the example of that is I can give is with regard to the sensory, that too, uh, just to give you an example, sensory is also two. You have one sense that is outside, that which is... Okay. Uh, he, he, he's speaking fast, so I have to speak fast. Uh, so you have one, uh, so something that is sensory, um, the thing that is sensed that is outside of us, and that and the sensation of that that is within us. So for example, he says if you do this with your eye, for example, you, the thing that's out there, you see two, you see in double. right? So that which is the actual object of sensation is one is out there, but in my sensation, uh, sensory perception of it, I see it as different. I see it as two. So in the same way, the imaginal is also like that, first of all. that You have an imagination, the world of imagination, the imaginal world that is without us, the mun uh, fasil, and you have the world of imagination that is within us. حکمای مشا خیال متصل رو اثبات میکردن اما خیال منفصل رو نمیتونستن اثبات بکنن 